This is my 15,000 mile review on my 2021 Harley Davidson Pan America Special. Finally got about 15,000 miles on it, touch over that, and I think 15,000 miles is enough miles to get a pretty good idea of what this bike's like and what I think of it. Just to give you all a baseline to have an idea of what I've been doing with it, I started off with three 1,000 mile Saddle Sore 1000 runs, those are uh, 1000 miles in 24 hour. Then I took it over, I ran it in the Iron Butt Rally, pretty much all across the US. Took it on a road trip up to New Orleans and back. Now yeah, just because I always wanted to take a road trip up to the Big Easy. Then I spent the last month using it as a uh, daily driver. Commuting back and forth to work, commuting back and forth to the stores, taking it to go cash my paycheck, stuff like that. Actually, it was kind of frustrating when you get used to a thousand mile days switching over to less than a hundred mile days in city is very frustrating. But I thought that I really needed to put that time in as well to get an idea of what this bike is all the way around. Now, one thing I do want to mention is this is actually my bike. I didn't get this as a loaner. It wasn't sold to me for a dollar or nothing like that. I bought it, paid full MSRP for it. I'm putting all the miles on it. Paid for the maintenance package, paid for the extended warranty. And if I break anything not covered by that, I'm paying for it out of my own pocket. So when I'm looking at this bike and evaluating this bike, I bought this bike. That's exactly the way I'm looking at it. I bought this bike pretty blind. The only time I'd ever even sat on one before was during Daytona Bike Week. They had one in a solid mount. I don't know if it was supposed to be just a display model or not, but nobody stopped me, so I walked up on it, hopped on it, and it seemed to fit me pretty good, both standing and sitting. That was the only time I'd seen one, or looked at one, sat on one, or anything prior to going down to Orlando Harley and buying one. Thought about it a month or so, went down to $1,600 deposit on one. Nobody else had put a deposit on one down there, so they told me I had first shot at them. I filmed that somewhere, but I seen a loss of footage. Well, one of these days that might show up again. A couple of uh, weeks later, one of them suddenly popped up, went down there, did the paperwork, Put the rest of the money down on it, hopped on it, and headed out and did a saddle sore 1000 on it to break it in. That's a uh, 1000 miles in 24 hours. Brought it back the next day for service. There's actually a little bit of a, a funny story about that because uh, the next day I got a call from the uh, Harley customer service. They do a follow up thing, see how you like it, how are people treating you, and stuff like that. And the lady asked me, and I uh, about buying. I said, oh yeah, I love it. It's a great bike. In fact, I'm bringing it back tomorrow. And the lady sounded all concerned. Uh, oh, is there a problem with it? Nah, I just put a thousand miles on it yesterday and it's ready for service. And the lady started, I'm glad to hear, and all of a sudden, what? I guess she wasn't expecting a, an answer like that. But right off the bat, I put a thousand miles on it. Ran like a champ the whole way. I've been happy with it. Now there's something about this bike that's kind of unique. It may be just me. It may not be everybody. But from the day I sat on this bike, this bike has felt familiar. Like a bike I've been riding for over a decade. You know, it's just instinctive to the way I ride, the way I do things. It just matches me really well. I don't know why that is. It just is. I mean... When I left, you know, when I put the money down, jumped on the bike, and rode out of there, by the time I had left the parking lot, I was totally and completely comfortable with this bike, and my mind was not thinking about the bike. The mind was thinking about the ride I was getting ready to do. Most bikes ain't like that, at least for me. This bike just matches me for some reason. I don't know why. Now, this is a really fun bike to ride. 
It's the kind of bike you find yourself heading out on your lunch break and one road turns into another road, turns into a twisty road, and next thing you know you're hightailing it back to work, didn't even bother stopping to eat because you've been out having fun your whole lunch break. It's that kind of bike. It kind of brings back the, the joy of riding that you had when you was a, a kid with a Schwinn, where you go riding around everywhere, hop a curb here, ride down a storm drain there, you know, that kind of good fun. Just kind of brings out the hooligan in you for some reason. I don't know why. It's just a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun with it. Plan on keeping it for a good long time. I think the reason this thing is so much fun to ride is it just handles so well. This thing is phenomenal on the streets. It's more like a sport touring bike than an adventure bike. I've had this thing leaned over in the corners way farther than I should have ever had it leaned over in the street. Handles well, stops pretty good, accelerates scary. It's one of those bikes that if you crack the throttle too hard and you ain't paying attention, it can jerk you back in the seat and you wind up accidentally cracking the throttle even higher. The only thing I really had to get used to with this is keeping the uh, RPMs over 3,000 RPMs. It's a lot happier there. If it's lower than that, you start lugging the motor, and that's kind of an adjustment you have to do if you're used to the other Harley-Davidsons. They're happier down lower than that. You also kind of have to get used to stopping it. Like any adventure bike with long travel front suspension, it tends to dive a lot when you brake really hard. If you set the brakes first, you come on the brakes a little, let the suspension collapse partially, then get on the brakes hard, it's fine. This thing stops, stops very well, and the ABS works very good on this thing. As a daily rider, seat position is actually pretty good. I know earlier in my IBR setup when I talked about how it was too far forward, but that's very specific to setting it up as a, a long distance endurance bike. As a daily rider, this seat position is actually pretty good. It gets you in a nice aggressive position and you're riding in the city and people wandering into the middle of the street without looking, it gives you the control you need to get around them without hitting them or slam on the brakes without hitting them. Day in, day out, short rides, I didn't have any problems with it at all. Of course, when I'm setting it up for the next iron butt rally, the seats are still going to go and I'm still going to pull up the bars, but that's going to be a completely different video down the road. Okay, the big thing, reliability. That's what you keep hearing all over the internet, how these things are falling apart and dying left and right. Well, I guess my bike was built on a Wednesday or something, because 15,000 miles, this bike has been running perfect. I've had exactly one problem with it, and that was completely my fault. And I mentioned that in one of my earlier videos. When I trailered this thing out to Utah, I didn't shut down the alarm system, and the alarms were flashing all the way from Florida to Utah. Battery was dead by the time I got there. Can't blame that on the bike. That's actually one of those rare things that is included in the owner's manual. So I got no excuse on that one. Battery charged right up, and it fired right up again, so it didn't even really leave me stranded. Other than that, the bike has been running great. I've been reading a lot of stuff, and I tell you what, coming up on the Iron Butt Rally, I was continually reading and checking every single problem I kept hearing about these, how these were falling apart left and right, engines were blowing up left and right, the electrical stuff was going bad left and right, checking every single one of those things. I don't know, maybe I just got lucky. This bike has been absolutely positive, re reliable, and I have not had any kind of problem like that. Of course, now having saying that, I've probably just jinxed myself, so knock on aluminum and hope it don't happen. Now, I did have the inline fuse blow on my ram mount charging system, but that's something that I installed. That has nothing to do with Harley, so I can't blame that on them. I was worried about having a chain on a long distance running bike, but I threw a chain oiler on it, 
and I haven't had a problem with it other than the initial stretching that I had in the very beginning. 15,000 miles, I still have the same chain on it. Seems to be lasting fine. Can't complain about that. I gotta grudgingly admit that the, the chain on this thing is, it seems to be working pretty good and it doesn't need chains the way my old uh, 800 used to. Still be a little bit more uh, confident with the shaft drive as long as it wasn't one of them shaft drives that blow up on a regular basis. But that's somebody else's problem. I love the TPMS system on this thing. I love the way it gives me the front and rear tire pressures. One thing I don't like about it is it's not adjustable for when you're uh, going to have the low tire pressure air show up. I also love the range. The range on this thing is surprisingly accurate. and It'll run all the way down to zero. But when you're running it all the way down to zero, remember, it is surprisingly accurate. And I did run out of gas twice during the Iron Butt Rally. I'll be sticking a bigger tank on it for that. But the five and a half gallon tank is fine for everyday use. I love the wheel choice that they have on this bike too. It's a very standard size. And because of the size, weight, and power of this bike, pretty much any tires that work on the BMW R1250 GS work great on this bike as well. It gives you a wide range of tires available, and if you jump on the internet, ADV Rider, stuff like that, you got a lot of people with a lot of experience with the tires, and you know exactly what you're getting into. Okay, now the bike is not perfect, but then again, nothing's perfect. But there are some issues that really, really need to be addressed by Harley. Number one is documentation. That owner's manual is missing so much important stuff that it needs to be completely rewritten. They need to start from scratch, rewrite it, and reissue it. It's missing a lot of very, very basic stuff. In fact, I might actually do another video just on the owner's manual showing you what's there and what's missing and how to find what's missing of it. Another problem is just parts availability. Now I know it's not just a Harley thing, it's a lot of things. I can't get parts from my Rubicon that's broke down in the driveway. But parts that I had on order before the Iron Butt Rally are even further away from showing up now, months later. It's a problem. I know it's a new bike. The aftermarket is starting to step up and I might actually start going to some aftermarket parts for this bike. We'll just have to see what shows up, what's available, and how much money I have. Because that's a part of it too. And the biggest problem I've been having with this bike as a daily driver turns out actually to be the kickstand. Kickstand is, on this bike just isn't very good. The way these things work, for those of you that don't know, when the weight goes on to it, it pushes up and then it locks. It will not go back like that. Now, normally the way bikes are set up, they get past a certain point, they snap right up. This one doesn't quite do that. And the thing I've noticed with this bike is when you come off the kickstand and you're moving it around, especially when you're pushing it around, it is very easy to get it just a little bit far back, just that far is all it takes. And when you put the weight on it, it does not go into that locking slot. And the, it's actually slightly far back. Then if you bump it even slightly, it just rides right up like that. I had that happen to me on the Iron Butt Rally and I didn't realize it. The bike rolled forward and pinned me up against a uh, gas pump found out those outside cases the gas pump ain't actually held on all that good it kind of shifted around while i was getting the bike but i've also had that happen to me quite a few times parking the bike i didn't realize it fortunately i haven't dropped it because of that yet but i have come close a few times
This is a little bit more head-on view of what I'm talking about. This kickstand is a very vertical kickstand anyways. It doesn't go forward that much. When it goes up normally, that's the locking spot. Anywhere past that, it's not locked in. When you lift it off the side stand just that little bit, when you're pushing it forward, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to just pull it back that far. Then when you put it back down on it, it goes up and it catches on that lip instead of getting caught inside the slot. And it can just slide right on out and drop your bike on you. It actually wouldn't take a, a very big redesign of this mechanism here. And it's something you could retrofit to the old bikes or even offer as an aftermarket replacement to the old bikes. If they're going to do that though, I'd also like to see them have a, a little bit heavier mount for the whole kickstand. I haven't had any troubles yet, but when you're out on a trail, sometimes you need to pull the bike up on the side stand to spin it around on a single track. And just like the, uh, the 800 BMW I had, this is mounted straight to the engine case and that just worries me. I hope I'm just worrying for no reason like I was worrying about the chain, but I'd feel a lot better if it was more solid. So now we're down to the final question. Most important question. Is this bike worth it? Is this bike worth what I paid for it? Is it worth keeping? It's kind of a tough question when you've had a long long history with motorcycles. I've never spent anywhere near this much on a motorcycle before in my life. The first three Harleys I bought, all of them cost less than $4,000. When I paid $6,000 for a brand new motorcycle, I thought that was crazy money back then. Of course, at the time, I kind of had crazy money because I had just come back from desert storm and there was a distinct lack of places for me to spend money while that was going on. So I had to sit down and I had to look at what they're charging for this bike and what everybody else is charging for similar bikes. They're all in the same bar park. And I had to kind of sit down and look at this bike. What does this bike do? Do I enjoy this bike? Yeah. This is an awesome bike. I'm getting more out of this bike than a lot of other bikes would give me that cost about the same amount. I've test drove a few. I really wasn't that impressed. Every time I jump on this bike, this bike impresses me. This bike is enjoyable. I have fun. It has been absolutely reliable so far. I haven't had a single problem. Knock on aluminum because I'm sure I'm jinxing myself with this video. But I'm glad I bought it. I plan on keeping it. I don't plan on getting rid of it anytime soon. And with any luck at all, in a couple of years, I'm going to be making a video like this talking about how I finished the Iron Butt Rally on it. So, my opinion, it's worth it. But that's my opinion. Your mileage will vary. Take care, be safe out there, get in the wind.